The concussion awareness training tool, or CAT for short, was spearheaded by Dr. Shalina Babul, and uh, it has e-learning modules for various audiences, so medical professionals, coaches, parents and caregivers, school professionals, as well as players and participants. Um, it was very sport and youth focused, and so some feedback that we were getting is that there needed to be resources for the general adult population. And this past summer, we launched CAT for workers and workplaces to fill that gap. CAT workers and workplaces, like the other CAT modules, is based on the best research and practice available. Given the relative scarcity of research on concussion recovery and return to work uh, in civilian working adults, we conducted semi-structured interviews and focus groups from spring to, uh, 2018 to winter 2019 with 47 British Columbians representing a wide variety of industries. The objective of this research was simple. Um, we wanted to ensure ultimately that the resources we created would be useful to the end users, uh, including workers and their families, joint occupational health and safety committees, and employers. Of the 47 interviews, 16 participants were workplace stakeholders or healthcare professionals who support adults with concussion and uh, recovery and return to work. And 31 participants were workers who had sustained a concussion and uh, returned to work or were in the recovery and return to work process. There is representation from all five of the regional health authorities across BC and um, when possible interviews were in person or over the phone uh, depending on, on where people lived and their preferences. And um, on average, interviews were about 45 minutes altogether. It was 25 hours of data. Once transcribed, it was over 800 pages. An inductive thematic analysis was used um, to identify themes relating to recovery and return to work. These data were independently analyzed, uh, coded in in vivo 12 by two researchers who met frequently and iteratively developed the codebook, reviewed themes, and ultimately established high inter-rater reliability. An unexpected yet pervasive theme was the role of gender, and so these data have been reanalyzed with a gender lens to understand the barriers and facilitators in concussion recovery and return to work. Given the theme of this symposium, this presentation will focus on the experience of women more so. It's well known that there are different environmental exposures, biological disparities uh, and vulnerabilities to injury, as well as gender um, disparities in norms and role expectations that affect health, recovery and return to work. The Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety now has a safety gender work and health portal um, where they go into this in more depth if you'd like to explore it further. When most people think of workplace concussions, often what comes to mind are male-dominated, physically intensive industries. And that may be true. We know that many concussions are likely undiagnosed and that men have less healthcare-seeking behavior. However, when we analyze the data that we do have access to um, and looking at the sectors in BC, by far the greatest uh, number of time lost concussion claims originate from the service sector. When exploring this further, we see that almost every industry in the service sector, time loss concussion claims were higher among women than men, particularly in professional, uh, scientific and technical services. And within this industry, the majority of these claims came from occupations in medicine, health, service jobs and social science. So let's shift from the broad provincial data to the texture of individual stories. For all participants, but women in particular, facilitators for recovery and return to work included high levels of support from family members, colleagues, and supervisors. Um, it also came down to the workplace environment as well, and certain activities that uh, women felt were helpful for their recovery, specific to um, mental health uh, symptoms, and the management was coloring, meditation, yoga, deep breathing exercises, time spent in nature and interactions with pets. Um, and one of the concussion clinic physiotherapists that was interviewed said, I've had less complaints and less women be like, why would I relax? How is relaxation going to help me? Whereas there are a fair more amount of men who say, relaxation is stupid and I'm not going to do it. Coloring is an activity for children. In terms of barriers, 
Um, stress was one that was mentioned frequently, uh, in particular for finances. And then doubt and abilities, fear of making mistakes, being unsure of abilities. And so a medical laboratory assistant um, illustrates this by saying, my biggest hurdle for me was the fact that I was very afraid, nervous about how my brain worked. So for me, my fear was going back to work if I, was if I made a mistake and I'm unaware that I've made a mistake and I've actually cried. It was a huge source of anxiety for me, a source of anxiety of not being 100% sure of my own self. Um, something else that came up was being unsure of driving, so the commute actually to get to work. And this was something that wasn't really addressed. Um, and both men and women were unsure of whether or not they could comfortably drive. Uh, the difference was that women tended to deal with this by asking for help from their friends or family members or trying to find carpooling options. Um, and the men just continued to drive, but felt a little bit crooked about it and told their doctors they weren't. There was also stigma around um, having an invisible injury and returning to work, the lack of casseroles for concussions, and then of course the double shift of unpaid care and domestic work. Um, so coming home when you're returning to work, feeling that your energy is at zero, and then having to uh, do that double shift. And something that came up as well was um, the identity shift in now being unable to serve others. So a performer from the film and television industry said, you don't see it in yourself. You don't look at it as depression. You look at it as, I'm useless. I don't need to live. I'm a caregiver to so many people in my family. I couldn't take care of my grandchildren. My daughter is a single mother. My mother doesn't drive. She depends on me for her groceries. My husband wasn't working, and it was like, I can't do anything. So it was like, I have no purpose to be on Earth. And a nurse said, my family has suffered because of what is going on. My social life is basically nothing. Nobody really wants to talk to me. I'm also draining a lot of people that I speak with because I'm trying to decompress, but I'm becoming quite needy as a person with my friends. They're not used to that. So in a study of adults who sustained a um, concussion in the workplace, women expressed greater proactivity in seeking health care and medical advice, and uh, gender relations shaped return to work experiences most strongly in traditional male workplaces where workers felt pressure to tough it out. And uh, in our study, um, women in, in more male-dominated workplaces said that they did not want to be seen as, as a princess. Being seen as a princess came up over and over again, whereas men, instead of talking about it in terms of gender roles, talked about it in terms of ages. They didn't want to be a baby. Um, so babies and princesses. And men also typically uh, identify more strongly with their occupational roles, whereas women identify with multiple roles, such as mother, worker, spouse, and friend, which we definitely saw coming through in this work. And following TBI, so this studies for all TBI, not just um, concussion, women had less workforce participation and a greater likelihood of reducing work hours or stopping work compared with men. In terms of limitations and directions for future research, um, we know that the experience of gender is entwined with other social locations, such as social class position, sexual orientation, race, religion, and so on. And because of these inherent confounds, it's difficult to uh, take a simple comparison of men to women and find it to be meaningful um, when separated from the larger cultural context of gender role socialization. Further, we weren't expecting these themes to come up. We were simply asking people, what was your experience with recovery and return to work? And um, all of these issues came up. And so if we were to do it again, we would have more of a critical eye to it. And we would ask people, you know, all of these different demographics and really see how that brought to bear on their experience. There was also... Um, a need for further exploration of industry-specific resources for return to work and recovery. Uh, nurses wanted to hear from other nurses. People in the film and television industry wanted to hear from other people in the same industry, same for concussion, and on and on. And uh, we know that the um, gender differences and emotional restrictions, so what emotions are socially expected of you vary um, in Western countries and non-Western, so that's a factor as well that should be explored further. 
Um, it's difficult to draw specific conclusions from 47 people that we spoke to, but we do know that gender is performative. It's something that we do. And uh, the women in this study expressed difficulties with recovery and return to work as they were unable to perform their roles beyond the workplace. And the emotions expressed, we have to um, have a caveat, they might not entirely reflect the emotions experienced by participants. So coming back to gender norms and display rules. Um, for example, in the research literature, uh, substance use aligns with traditional masculine gender role norms as an acceptable means for coping with distress. And so um, women said in their recovery, they wish they had been shown more compassion. Men said they wish they had been able to have a magic pill. And uh, women had, they talked very openly about the fact that they were lonely and isolated. Um, whereas men were more so inclined to say, oh, I was bored. I was alone and that made me bored. Um, so I think being sensitive to the language used to support recovery and return to work uh, could benefit from acknowledging this gendered discourse. So although this presentation focused on the sociocultural differences between men and women, it's important to note that there are extensive similarities. Um, one of the biggest mediating factors in recovery and return to work uh, was really about the care that was received and that sort of hinged on whether people had any awareness or understanding around concussion itself. Um, and of course, that's why we created this, this training tool for workers and workplaces. Um, and our hope is though, that beyond educating everybody, understanding the gender differences allows us to better understand the experiences of recovery and return to work for both women and men and guide us in creating more effective resources. What I love about doing qualitative interviews is that there's always two things being brought to the table. One is what the researcher is asking about and the other one is the agenda of the participant. So I hope I've represented that well. These are the references. I'd like to thank our research participants, the team at the BC Injury Research and Prevention Unit and the Provincial Health Services Authority for the funding of this project. Oh, that's if I got a question about mechanisms. So that's the end, thank you. Um, so we developed this project in partnership with the uh, WorkSafe BC um, and while they were supportive of us developing the tools, we're still working on seeing how these tools will be used in, in their practices day to day. So, so they're, they're not ready for prime time yet? They're not being used as policy and procedure for people who have work-related head injuries? Yes, I mean, our dream would be that as soon as an employer has somebody with a concussion claim returning to work, they need to do this module so they know how to support that person returning to work. We're not at that stage yet, but we are working towards it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And your question is quick, go ahead. Uh, did you look at level of education at all? <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, we didn't ask about that, but I think we might be able to, when we go through it again, use occupation as a bit of a proxy for that. Yeah, we did notice that people in medical professions, um, maybe paradoxically to me, they didn't tend to go for a diagnosis. They said, yeah, I know what's happening, I don't need it. And then they realized, oh, maybe for workers' compensation, I actually should have gone sooner than I did, so. Yeah.